This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. Welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse 95. It is me, Hani Balqis, with Omnia Saleh, bringing you everything you need to know that was happening in the UAE and around the world when it does come to tech. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a Wednesday, a very sunny, a very hot, and a very oh, yes. humid Wednesday. <laughs> but you know what else is hot in the news, ladies and gentlemen? We're talking about major websites and how they're back online after a fast cloud computing glitch happened and took them offline. Yes, indeed. Some of the biggest websites in the world were actually down yesterday. Some of the biggest news outlets, CNN, Bloomberg, they were all shut down and we're going to be giving you all the latest on why that happened. Coming up on today's show as well, we're going to be talking about an FBI encrypted app that actually led to 800 arrests of global criminals. Yes, and if you're tired about typing your emails, you can now use your voice to write emails and much more. We're talking about the new Microsoft Microsoft Outlook for iOS update. How is going to let you do that? Yes, indeed. Coming up on today's show, if you've always wondered, why do you see what you see on Instagram's newsfeed? How come your newsfeed looks a little different than your friends or your siblings? Well, today we're going to be hearing from the Instagram chief on how the service decides what you see and when you see it. Yes, and for our Take This House segment, we're talking about Dubai and how they're going to explore a futuristic Skyrail project with a Chinese company that is behind the Panda Express. Yes, indeed. Lots and lots is in store on today's show. So keep all 75 locked and we'll be right back. Daily Digital News. Bits and bytes connect our world. There are certain websites on the World Wide Web that we look at as invincible. Ones that we go for any news, we go for whenever we want to check on the weather. They're just staples, you know, and we never think of them actually being hacked ever or going through an outage. But sadly, yesterday, the cloud service company that runs some of the biggest and the world's most visited websites have actually crashed and they were down for a few hours. These websites are for the UK government and some of the largest news organizations around the world. From CNN to Bloomberg, they were all shut down yesterday. Yes, and some of your favorite uh, websites, including Reddit, Twitch, and even Amazon and even Hulu were down as well. And actually, I did catch them being down at the right time. Now, those websites of the UK government and some of their largest news organizations around the world were suffering from that outage. Now, that widespread outage was caused by a disruption at the U.S.-based cloud service company, which does go by the name of Fastly. Now, visitors trying to access, for example, CNN.com got a message that did say Fastly error, unknown domain, CNN.com. Now, attempts to access the Financial Times website also turned up a similar message and even Reddit, Amazon, Twitch, etc. Now, a lot of people, the number one place they go to to check if a website is down is none other than Twitter. They'll go and search, say, for example, the keyword <laughs> Amazon down. Yeah. And they'll see if people are with them saying, yeah, Amazon is down. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the best perks of using Twitter because then you can find out exactly which outage and where it's happening. Unless Twitter is out, then that's the biggest issue. But Fastly does run a content delivery network that tries to push data very quickly around the internet so businesses can help consumers shop online or watch videos on different applications and websites, which explains why they own Amazon and Hulu. A lot of their coverage areas were actually facing what they would like to call degraded performance. And the company did later come out and say that they have identified what the issue was and it was being fixed. So the main issue was actually a service configuration that triggered a lot of those disruptions with different websites. And once they actually fixed that, everything went back to normal. Now, not all of the customers were actually affected by this. So some people may have been able to access those websites with no issue at all whatsoever. And other websites were down dramatically for quite some time. Yes, and the United Kingdom's Attorney General, who is kind of a big deal, did tweet that the country's main government.uk website was down providing an email for inquiries. Now, Amazon's retail websites across the globe were also down with users unable to even load the sites. Now, that outage was initially believed to be caused by an issue with Amazon Web Services, but the company did not report any disruptions. Now, it is very, very big news when a website goes down nowadays because we are all so interconnected and invested into these websites. Reddit, it's there for entertainment, news, uh, forms, blogs. 
Twitch as well, entertainment. You can watch people game. Amazon, if you want to buy things. Exactly. So you're having a huge marketplace of uh, of entertainment, of uh, products, of e-commerce, of just uh, binge watching your favorite streamers, all going down. And you kind of look to yourself, hey. What am I going to do now? You kind of feel like your life is boring. You feel like you're out of the loop. But in reality, those websites are actually out of the loop. Now, what's interesting with this is a lot of investigations behind this outage. We're trying to place all the blame on Amazon's retail websites. So it is believed that the outage started out with an issue with Amazon's web services. And, you know, and then it spread to the other websites. But the company did not actually report any disruptions. Now, this concerns me a little bit because next week, actually, I think on the 21st of June is Amazon's Prime Day. So if an outage like this happens next week, it's not going to be very good for that company. Now, if you're wondering what is Fastly, you know, this is the the main reason why there was outage with all those websites. It's because the cloud service Fastly was actually down for some time. And Fastly is responsible for the performance of these web services and the speed of them. So you as a user going on Amazon, you enter, let's say, looking for, I don't know, vacuums. <laughs> well, I don't know why they can't, why that came to mind, but vacuums, uh, iPhones or whatever. The minute you click search, you get your search results instantly. There is no buffer time. And the company responsible for providing you with these uh, results in very remarkable speeds is fastly so when a website like this is down that means we as users get a much less quality experience and that is because uh, rather than hosting all website content on a single set of servers in one location fastly does put a cloud infrastructure in dozens of locations to let people download from a server that is closest to them let us know your guys thoughts 4215 do it or on instagram at pulse 95 radio if you did notice or suffer from the outage i personally was on twitch and amazon at mm. that time and it was around for me 1 p.m 1 30 yesterday when did you did you notice when they were back no, I didn't no, notice when okay. they were back, but uh, again, uh, I'm glad they are back because uh, when we I got can't home, live without them. <laughs> I can't live. I need. I need to get uh, updated on my information about my favorite streamers and uh, if uh, I need to buy something really quick <laughs> because I'm a very impulsive buyer. <laughs> well, let us know if you are just like Hanny. Our text lines are open four two one five door to salat or sign into our DMs at Pulse ninety five Radio. Coming up, we're going to be talking about yet another form of global criminals, but. This time, they were caught with using FBI's encrypted application. Daily digital news. Bits and bytes connect our world. An FBI encrypted app has led to the arrest of 800 global criminals now. The Trojan Shield was one of the largest law enforcement operations to date in the fight against criminal activities. Now, more than 800 criminals were arrested 55 luxury vehicles impounded and over 48 million dollars in various currencies and assets were seized through a covert operation that tricked those criminals into using a phone encryption app run by the FBI and 16 other global security agencies. You think someone or these criminals <laughs> who uh, acquired 55 luxury vehicles and over 48 million dollars, they would uh, kind of be a little bit more Aware. Aware about an FBI encrypted app. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. And it's crazy to think that a single application was able to have or was able to allow the FBI to arrest those 800 criminals. Now, a series of law enforcement actions were executed over the past few days across 16 different countries, resulting in more than 700 house searches and being able to catch those criminals and find out exactly what they have done. Now, this operation is an exceptional success by the authorities in the United States, Sweden, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, and many other European members of the operational task force. The aim of this mission was to basically target some of the biggest, most global organized crimes by offering those criminals an encrypted device and an application with different features that to them seems very helpful in allowing them to execute those high profile crimes but in the reality and what's lying behind it all was just this basically like a trap for the FBI to be able to catch them seamlessly. Yes, now since 2019, the agencies did run an encrypted device company called Anom. Now, it did grow to a service to more than 12,000 encrypted devices that were used by over 300 criminals. And those criminals do syndicate operating in more than 100 countries. Now, groups that were using this app 
time did include Italian organized crime. So basically the mafia mm-hmm. and outlaw motorcycle gangs and even international drug trafficking organizations. Now, these encrypted criminal criminal communication platforms have traditionally actually been a tool to evade law enforcement and even facilitate transnational organized crime. So they use this tool to actually run away from the FBI, but in reality, they were getting closer to them. Now, we're looking at how this might just uh, be, um, you know what, a turn of tables. Now, Mm -hmm. a Trojan... Well, for those who don't know, a Trojan virus is uh, is kind of like a is a virus that is hidden as something else. It's a you know? silent killer, basically. You could say it's a silent killer. It mm-hmm. is deemed as something else because if uh, the word Trojan, if you guys do remember, uh, if you guys read your history books, uh, back in the in the Roman days when uh, they gave a gift of a Trojan horse, mm. and but inside of that Trojan horse was four hundred uh, <laughs> what's it called soldiers that went and occupied the city. Yeah. Right. But with when it does come to computers and, and, and viruses, that Trojan horse actually is, uh, let's say, for example, I'm going to give you a phone, but the phone is not actually a phone. It's a device to ruin your computer. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like and, giving you a backdoor to yes, get through to someone. And that is exactly what happened. Now, that Trojan shield was actually something to actually uh, kind of put the FBI off of your trail. But in reality, it mm-hmm. was bringing them closer to the FBI. So you could say that... Uh, they got a taste of their own medicine. Exactly. And with the Anom device, which was basically the Trojan horse, you had to get, you had to know a criminal or be a high profile criminal to be able to get your hands on one of those customized phones. And in reality, those phones, they can't ring. They can't send emails. You can only use them to communicate with someone on that exact same platform. And guess who was on that platform? You guessed it right. It was the FBI as well. So these devices are initially used by all those criminals. They did not for a second stop to think, oh, what if it's a trap? No, because they, you know, in the beginning of times, they actually used them to be able to communicate with one another and to be able to make whatever plan they have come to reality. So these devices were initially used by those senior crime figures. So once the FBI kind of put them into play, they were able to get their hands on who those high profile criminals were let us know what your thoughts are i'm i'm very excited to see applications now being used not just for giving us benefit in our own lives but also helping the police helping the senior officials get their hands on those high profile criminals very easily yes let us know your guys thoughts of uh if you ever thought something like this would happen uh these criminals getting a taste of their own mess we're going to be taking a short break but when we come back we're going to be telling you guys how to write emails using your voice pulse 95 apps all around what's worth a click and download Are you sick of typing out your very own emails, sending it to one another employee and just starting it out with the same exact thing? Hope you're doing well. This, this, this is what I need. Kind regards, yours truly. Omnia Saleh, Hannibal Qais, whatever your name is. Well, you're not going to have to do that for so much longer because Microsoft Outlook is launching a brand new feature for all iOS users that will allow you to basically speak out your email and they will write it for you. Yes, now Microsoft is adding a voice capability to its Outlook mobile app that will let people write their own emails, schedule meetings, and even search using their voice. Now, the new Cortana-powered voice capabilities will be available first in Outlook for iOS with then Android support coming soon. Now, for those who don't know what Cortana is, it is basically the Siri of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And that new plus sign icon in Outlook Mobile will actually appear soon and will let you activate the voice mode and you'll be able to ask things like when is my next team meeting or even search for co-workers files and can- calendar entries and you can even use that voice to actually attach files quickly as outlook is using the microsoft graph to surf to surface relevant documents so we're looking at how microsoft is trying to make it a lot easier for those people who send emails on a daily and are, are, are always in that app and i'm looking at it how it could be very 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 useful Now, um, I've actually done this before, but not with the same concept. I've done voice to text before. Mm -hmm. You know, I I would just say, hey, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and say what I had to say. And then I would go back and re-edit it because sometimes uh, 
the the voice text would not pick up on certain words. Yeah, I, I've seen that with them as well. With any voice text, there are a lot of errors usually, but they're getting smarter by the day. And dictation is actually, it's not the first time we hear Microsoft Outlook or just any of Microsoft's products try and implement it. I don't know if you know, but you probably know about this, honey. I think half of the world does, but I discovered it recently and I was mind blown. So on Word document, you can actually, there's a feature, I think it's called read it out or read it out, read it out to me or read along. There is an automated machine or a robot voice that will read out the entire document that you've just written for you out loud. So if you're, let's say, doing the dishes or doing something around the house and you want to go through a document or any paper that you've written, you can simply have Microsoft Word read it out to you, which I personally thought was just so helpful. Now, dictation with Outlook will take a whole new other look to it because now you can even respond back to emails with your own voice on iOS or write new emails. And we've seen how helpful Siri can be. So can you imagine how amazing would that be with your very own emails at work? Now, alongside that voice edition, Microsoft is also launching a separate schedule of Microsoft 365 service, which is designed for Microsoft 365 administrators to enable a back-end service that does actually help schedule meetings. It will plug into Cortana to actually allow users to set up meetings just using email replies. And you can even reply to a colleague confirming a meeting and simply write Corona. Please Cortana. find a time... <laughs> Huh? You said Corona. <laughs> Corona? Cortana. Please find a time to meet next week and scheduler should find the most appropriate time and even arrange that meeting. Now, we do know that um, Microsoft Outlook is one of my go-to uh, apps when it does come to emails. Yep. I don't like to use the, the, the iOS app. I like mm. to use the Microsoft app or or the third app, not the one that is embedded into my phone already, as I just think that is more, it is more dedicated to uh, my Outlook and even my Gmail is is on mm -hmm. Outlook uh, on the Outlook app. Absolutely, it's much more seamless. I personally find it as well. So let us know which is your go-to email application. Is it Gmail? Is it the normal mail app on your phone, or is it Outlook? We want to hear from all of you. Four two one five. Do it just a lot, or sign into our DMs at Pulse ninety five Radio. Coming up, if you've always wondered. Why do you get a certain post on your newsfeed? And why does your friend or any of your family members get a different post every single time? Well, your answers will be answered shortly as we see what the Instagram chief has to say about it and how he's going to explain to us how our own Instagram is basically dictated by our own hands. Keep us 95 locked. We'll be right back. How do you tech? How, how, how do you tech? Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Instagram and how, uh, you know, when you're going through your feed and you kind of are a little bit annoyed because a post from seven days ago is on the top of your feed and you're like, hey man, I just want my chronological order back. Well, Instagram chief is not going to explain how the service actually decides on what you see. And it might not actually be Instagram's fault, but maybe you're the one who is stuck to the past. Yes, indeed. So this is not really a how do you tech, but rather how does tech work? Because a lot of the times we can be a little bit frustrated at Instagram. A lot of rumors have been uh, rising in the past few weeks about Instagram intentionally hiding or disfavoring certain posts, which Instagram is actually saying is not exactly true. I don't necessarily believe everything that they say, but there is a little bit of science behind how the algorithms are working and how what you see on your feed on your news feed is actually decided so instagram uses thousands of signals to determine what you see in your feed and there isn't just one algorithm that decides what shows up for you but they are trying to explain to all of their users and to basically show them why they don't see certain posts straight away and why a lot of the times your feed looks different than every other person's feed so the way they they divided it is very simple there are basically four different aspects that decide what you see on your newsfeed. First, it's the information on the post. So there are different signals, both about how popular a post is and on how many people have liked it. And there are a lot more information about the certain posts than what appears on it. So 
If a video is certain is pretty long or if the location of the video is not close to you so there's no proximity, that might be a factor to decide when you see it and if you see it at all. There's also the aspect of the information about the person who posted it. So this gives them a sense of basically how interesting that person might be to you. And it includes different signals, like how many times people have interacted with that person in the past few weeks. And if that person would be of any interest for you to see their posts. Yes. And then for the third one, we're talking about your activity and how this helps them to understand what you might be interested in. And actually includes signals such as how many posts you've liked. And also for the fourth one, your history of interacting with someone. Now, this gives them a sense of how interested you are generally in seeing posts from a particular person or even a page. Now, an example is whether or not you comment on each other's posts. So if uh, A is always commenting on B's post, yeah. right? B is always going to see that content that A is posting and vice versa. Now, Instagram will then predict how you might interact with a post, such as commenting or even liking it. And the more likely you are to take an action towards that post, the more heavily they will weigh that action and the higher up you'll see that post. Now, again, Instagram is uh, I I'm still against the non chronological order that they have. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't make sense not to see things as they are uh, posted, uh, as they are posted. Because uh, some people use Instagram as a uh, news outlet, you know, some yeah. people have Barq al Emirat, the mm -hmm. UAE Barq. I get a lot of news about local and international news from Barq al Emirat. So if I see news from 18 hours ago that is on top of my feed, it's not really going to be much value of me. Yeah. For, for me, you know, if it's going to tell me how many COVID cases are in the UAE from Tuesday, I'm, I don't really, I'm <laughs> on Wednesday. I want to know what's happening now. So again, I guess Instagram uh, obviously does know better. I mean, Instagram is, is one of the top, if not the top social media uh, app right now. Mm -hmm. But again, I mean, apparently it's all in our hands and how yeah. we interact with these posts. I don't necessarily fully believe that. I feel like they're, they have a very big role in what appears and what doesn't appear on your feed, but you also have a little bit of a role to play in it. Now, the Instagram chief, Adam Muzeri, actually did also clarify why certain content shows up in the Explore tab or on the Reels app, which is basically Instagram's TikTok version. Um, if you haven't noticed, a lot of the times what you see on the Explore page may not necessarily be what's trending at the moment. And there is a lot of reasons behind that. Some of the reasons that he stated were that they basically try to show you content from accounts that you don't necessarily follow to give you a little bit of a variety and to allow you to discover different creators out there on, in the world of Instagram. But another question comes to mind, which is why are you not showing me everything that's trending in that page, which is kind of a move that TikTok does. So on TikTok, whenever you open, I think it's called the Explore tab or the For You page, you'll find either things that are close to you in location or you'll find mm -hmm. things that are trending at the moment, things that a lot of people are interested in. And TikTok believes that you may be interested in as well. So different mm -hmm. algorithms, different things to play around with, but they're definitely looking to hopefully work on their algorithms yeah. a little bit better and remove any bias that may be lying in them. But this, you see, the thing is with TikTok and Instagram, TikTok yeah. is not used uh, to spread news, right? Mm. It is not used to uh, let people be informed about certain topics. With TikTok, you have it as basically a funny video platform that people sometimes they like to show you DIYs on or DIYs. Yeah. Entertainment mostly. Entertainment mostly. Instagram has everything, right? Let's be honest, it has everything. If you mm. want funny, you'll find funny. If you want sad, you'll find sad. If you want news, you'll find news. And let's talk about the 47-year-old man that is not going to like and comment on pictures on um, on Barq al Emirat's posts. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to... No one's going to comment and like on it. I mean, if I'm going to read the news and keep on going. So... When that comes to that type of content, I do believe Instagram should differentiate between a a page that is for a person and a page that is for a news outlet. I agree. Right? So if breaking news is happening, mm. right, that should be at the top regardless. Of Rega what it is. Regardless of what from. it is. Yeah. If that account is 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 related to a uh, news outlet. To, to a news outlet, to a media agency, and they're saying, hey, uh something happened to someone this right? many COVID cases you yeah. name it for example right i want that at the top of my news feed because that is breaking news 
So I, I think maybe Instagram is good. Obviously, it's, it needs a lot of work. I mean, it's not yeah. easy just to do that. But the algorithm, sh- we're, we're at that point with AI and, and that the algorithm should know and should read and differentiate between this and that. I mean, that is my personal opinion. I may be wrong, but obviously we want to ask you guys, 4215, do it slot or on Instagram, at Pulse95 Radio. Do you think my solution to the chronological order <laughs> is good or not because i don't really care if my friend posts a picture from five yeah. minutes ago but i do care if breaking news is happening i mean sometimes i'll be on i'll say hey apple ios 15 has been announced i'm like what what do you mean i, it's, I didn't get news about it i didn't get news about it so again i think that uh certain things should be always at the top of the page i agree with you and going back to your point when you said you know a 47 year old or any older person may not necessarily comment on someone's picture i read somewhere i don't know how accurate this is but i read somewhere that instagram also calculates how much time do you spend looking at a post so with your speed when you're scrolling down your news feed if you pause or if you take a moment to really sit with a post even if you don't like it even if you don't comment if you don't do anything or even share this post just the amount of minutes that you spend pausing on a certain post is calculated by instagram's algorithm and is used to decide what you will see next let us know was this helpful to you and what do you think of the way things show up on your own news feed on instagram our text lines are open 4215 do it a lot or sign into our dms at pulse 95 radio coming up we're talking all about sky rails taking place right here in the uae keep pulse 95 locked we'll be right back check this out check this out Hanging trains used to sound like they're only part of any science fiction show or movie that we've ever seen or read about. But today, and right here in the UAE, this is becoming a reality because the Emirate of Dubai is actually exploring a sky rail with a Chinese company that is behind the well-known Panda Express. Yes, now Dubai has signed an early stage deal with a Chinese sky rail company to look at bringing a new transport network to the Emirate. Now the Roads and Transport Authority and Zongtang Sky Railway Group will explore futuristic transport systems. And that group is actually behind the project that was trailed which made headlines for its cute panda-themed carriages. <laughs> now, it is understood that the company's SkyPod design is one of five under consideration for Dubai. We have been looking at a lot of potential game players when it does come to these SkyPods, these sca- uh, railways that, you know, they want to kind of compete with the Dubai Metro. You know, the Dubai Metro was amazing and it is, it is, it is a big success. It was a game changer. Yeah. But again, right here in the UAE, we always, we're always looking for the next good, next big thing. And right now, sky pods are the next big thing. Yes, indeed. And right here in the heart of Sharjah, we've seen our very own version of the sky pods uh, that are being under development. They're actually, I think they've successfully completed uh, one of the... F- few first phases of this project which is the Unitsky uh, Skyway technology and we've seen hanging pods are being used to transport cargo and hopefully soon they'll be transporting human beings. Now one of the biggest advantages of using these hanging pods or transportation through sky pods is A, the impact on the environment. It's much less than using cars or even using trains. It's much more environmental friendly. But the other aspect is the speed. It cuts down on so much commute time. It allows all cities of the UAE to basically be interconnected and for a distance to no longer be an issue. You could potentially work in Ras Al Khaime and live in Sharjah. You could Mm -hmm. work in Abu Dhabi and transport yourself to Dubai in like, I don't know, 15 minutes, you name it. So this form of transportation is going to be the future of transport right here in the UAE. And looking at this sky um, sky rail that Dubai has signed a, a contract with the Chinese agency to be able to bring it to life, their carriages are actually going to be powered by lithium batteries instead of electricity. So we're looking at different forms of power also being implemented with the future of transport. Yes, now that deal actually came a day after the first passengers were given a trial of new Sharjah Sky Rail. So it does look like the RTA of Dubai was actually inspired by the Sharjah Sky Rail at the Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park. Now we do know that U Sky Transport of Belarus did unveil its version of the SkyRail network just a couple of months ago. And we actually had an interview with the chief executive at U Sky Transport, yes. who was Oleg 
Skarsky. <laughs> I think that was his name. Oleg, I think Zeratsky. Zeratsky. Yeah, Zeratsky. Right? You know, he's a... He's a, a Belarusian uh, guy. Yeah, he's a very big man with a very big name. Yeah. So they were inspired by this. And why wouldn't they? I mean, we got, even got the chance to ride those sky, uh, sky pods yes. a couple of months ago. Omnia went in and we had the whole team going and checking them out. And uh, believe it or not... The, the, how much traction this has been gaining that our interview with the chief executive was actually our most viewed u- video on YouTube. Yes, and you can actually go ahead and check it yes, out. Yes, we have, I think, around 150,000 views. It was one of... Check. You can go ahead and check. There, It's just, it gained a lot of traction because it's such a unique form of transportation. It's a game changer. And you can actually check out that interview yourself and find out more about this SkyRail network that will... It actually is already going to be, I think, launched for cargo very, very soon. And hopefully, we'll also be able to ride in it as passengers ourselves. You can check it out on our YouTube channel, Pulse95 Radio. And uh, what's the title of the video? I think it's Oleg Zeratsky. The UAE's first high-speed sky pod with yes. Oleg Zeratsky. Now, that has actually 105,000 views on YouTube. So again, it has been gaining a lot of traction. It is it is trending headlines. This will be the future of transportation. Now, we do know that we are, have very high, densely populated areas right here in the UAE. Yep. I mean, it, it takes a couple of, it takes a while to, trans, to, to move from Emirates to Emirates, especially if you're in Sharjah with all these cars on the road. But now, let's say that you could do all of this with a SkyPod. This will be a big, big, big game changer. And I'm excited to see how in the coming years we will see each emirate adapt to it maybe we'll have just one big skyway or <laughs> railway that will connect all emirates together who knows the future is definitely bright when we are talking about the future of transportation and we've seen different forms of technology currently in the works from the hyperloop that was actually tested at one of dubai's biggest uh, tech events and now we are talking about uh, the sky pods that are right here in the heart of Sharjah. And soon enough, we're also going to be getting a sky rail in the Emirate of Dubai. So lots and lots is in store for us right here in the UAE from moving seamlessly to providing to providing everyone with much more affordable transportation and curbing traffic congestion. No one likes to be stuck in traffic. Let us know what is your favorite out of those all. Is it the Hyperloop? Is it the SkyPod? Or is it the SkyRail? Our text lines are open for 215 to Salat or sign into our DMs at Pulse95 Radio. Future Talk is sadly coming to an end, but you can catch us again tomorrow. Same time, same place from 2 to 3 p.m. Until then. We have the halftime show, the only place to be at 3 that's kicking off in four minutes. Omar Dori will be giving you everything you need to know about what's happening in sports, mental health, gut health, fitness, you know where to be. 3 o'clock p.m. Keep 95.0 on your radio. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, only here on Pulse 95. 95. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.